Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. I was recently interviewed by The Telegraph for a comment on male infertility and why sperm counts are lowering. Well, it's not rocket science, is it? We are unhealthy compared to how we should be. And that is fighting fit, hunting and gathering. We also live in a poisonous world. We engage in negative behaviours and we are stressed. How many times have you heard of these well-to-do couples not being able to conceive and they pack up trying for two months and they are, hey presto, pregnant? Stress is a major cause of the inability to conceive. So as this is a TRT channel, we'll talk about TRT. Low testosterone is obviously a risk factor for, for male infertility. TRT is a well-known cause of infertility as well because testosterone monotherapy suppresses the HPG axis. So you no longer send LH and FSH down to the testicles. Now do not think that testosterone monotherapy is a contraceptive. It is not a contraceptive. You can still conceive with being on testosterone replacement therapy. So, hormones, they are essentially chemical messengers that help facilitate the function of their target organ. The target organ can still function, but suboptimally. Important to appreciate that. But we don't subscribe to testosterone monotherapy here at the Men's Health Clinic. We subscribe to HRT, testosterone cypionate and HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin. Say that three times real fast. So why do we utilize HCG? Now, as we've said before, we share the same hormones as females, but we have different amounts and our genes express them in a different way. So HCG is produced by the placenta to help maintain pregnancy. So in men, we utilize it because it mimics luteinizing hormone. It has two units, an alpha unit that mimics TSH, FSH and LH, and a beta unit that mimics LH. So, testosterone alongside HCG is hormone replacement therapy. And that should be the premise behind, again, any therapy to mimic physiology. One more time microdosing TRT. So I was also asked, why don't we use an LH analog? Now I suppose you have to have a fundamental understanding of physiology to answer that question. So luteinizing hormone is not sent down constantly to the testicles to produce testosterone, because as we said before, anabolic processes predominate at nighttime, catabolic process processes predominate in the daytime. LH is also released in a pulsatile manner. It isn't a constant flow of LH to the testicles. So we want to mimic physiology, but we can't obviously mimic that pulsatile release of LH from the pituitary. So an LH analog wouldn't really work unless it was LH cypionate or LH ananthate. Then it could work. Then you could really actually attain a stable drug level but would that be as effective as hcg in maintaining fertility well no it wouldn't would it because we've already said that testosterone monotherapy suppresses the hpg axis so you don't send lh and fsh down to the testicles so in theory you could use an lh cypionate and just preserve lh but spermatogenesis needs LH and FSH. So from a fertility perspective, it wouldn't make sense to use an LH analog or anything similar because HCG does the job. HCG mimics LH, has crossover with FSH and a little bit of, F of TSH as well. So from a pharmacokinetic perspective, from a logical perspective, it's important to appreciate that whilst we want to mimic physiology, 
what we've got, the tools that we've got, the optimal way of doing it is daily microdosing of test sip and HCG. It's such a common email to receive from patients that their partner has fallen pregnant. Sometimes it's not good news, <laughs> but invariably it is. So we do counsel patients that this is about normalizing physiology and part of what you should be able to do is maintain the ability to procreate. So we have patients that were previously infertile who are now fertile. How wonderful is that? Now it's interesting, we have a predominance of female births. Why that is, if somebody could postulate a reply, I would love to know. So what else? What else do we do? What if you're struggling? Now we have a standard TRT protocol. That is a suboptimal dose of HCG for fertility. It's normally okay, but it's not, it's not perhaps optimal. So if you are actively trying to conceive, I tend to prescribe a higher dose of HCG to maximize this LH and FSH production. Why don't we have everybody on this higher dose? Well, as we said before, LH is releasing a pulsatile manner down to the testicles and HCG is constantly stimulating the testicles to produce LH and FSH. What we don't want is down regulation. Now, if you oversaturate anything and anything in excess will ultimately lead to down regulation because the body survives on what concept? Balance and you need contrasting processes to establish harmony. Anything in excess is bad for you. So we give a TRT dose of HCG and in the short term for fertility, if you're actively trying to conceive, we give a higher dose. Now the NHS will prescribe crazy doses. We prescribe a sensible dose. So you're constantly stimulating the testicles to produce LH and a little bit of FSH. The amount of FSH seems to be more genetic, so it's not a dose dependent response. So this constant stimulation of the testicles is slightly unnatural. So what's also in the testicles? Well, yeah, you guessed it, the aromatase enzyme. So you're gonna convert testosterone to estradiol as well. So it's not that HCG raises estradiol and testosterone monotherapy is optimal. We want to be subscribed to HRT, but we don't want to overstimulate the LH and subsequent testosterone converting to estradiol due to the aromatase enzyme in the testicles. So we sometimes have to mitigate and prescribe something like an aromatase inhibitor if you are overstimulating the testicles. And again, this needs to be done very carefully and considered, and it's always a minimum effective dose to achieve the desired outcome. You can also use things like Clomid. Estradiol is neuroprotective. We don't want to mess around with estrogen in the brain. So Clomid, again, is not a long-term treatment option for TRT. It is a short-term use for infertility. And clomiphene, exactly the same. It is not a long-term option for TRT. We want to be able to carefully titrate your dose according to response to give you optimal physiology. Allow your body the best chance of achieving stability and balance. To allow you to do what? Yeah, one more time. Go earn your award.